Last time on the Skip and Josh podcast. Antonio Brown actually, you know, you heard, you know, he refused to play without his 10-year-old helmet. Right. And actually he t- he tweeted on Twitter, like the official his official Twitter account saying, "Does anybody have the I forget the name of the helmet. It's the a, Shure it's a, it's a shot. It's a shot. Yeah, shot. You know the helmet. S-C-H-U-T-T. Does, does anybody have this specific helmet manufactured after 2010? Because I'm looking for one. Yeah. Like, it's it, the whole thing is ridiculous. Antonio Brown is just a circus. And, and of course, you, you heard that he went all the way to France to go to this cryogenic clinic or something. Cryotherapy Yeah, and then he forgot, to, he forgot to put on socks, and now he has frostbite on his feet. Like, if you're going to go to a place like this, aren't you going to make sure you're wearing the proper footwear? You're listening to the Skip and Josh podcast with Skip Sherman and Josh Obadia. I'm Josh in Toronto. And I'm Skip in Montreal. In today's episode, Super Bowl predictions. A team that will go from worst to first. And hold out players. But first, are you ready for some football? Okay, Skip, so last episode you uh, teased uh, the listeners and you mentioned that we would be doing an NFL preview. And so sure enough, today is the day for the NFL preview. And there are there are two reasons that I, I really enjoy this episode every year. And one of the reasons is because it's actually less work for me because all I have to do <laughs> is ask questions. I don't have to come up with intelligent answers. Right. Okay, that's good. That's always a plus. The other reason I like this episode is because we get to have our favorite guest, Neil Schnurback. So let's welcome him right now. How are you, Neil? I'm doing great, guys. It's always uh, my favorite time of the year, both because I love NFL football and I do enjoy being on this podcast as well. Let's get ready for some football. So um, so let's dive right into things. Um, I've got a list of uh, questions for both of you, and I may weigh in on some answers myself. Mm-hmm. And I don't follow football as much as you guys, but I, I hear what's what the experts are talking about. And everyone seems to think that the Cleveland Browns, like it's almost like they've been anointed the next, you know, dynasty team. Yeah. So I guess we'll start with you, Neil. What do you think of the Cleveland Browns? Yeah, it's interesting. Skip, you, you, you probably remember, because uh, you're an Eagles fan. Remember when they, they put together that team that, ever, that they called the dream team? Yeah, they, well. They, they like signed a bunch of free agents. Yeah, it was like Deshaun Jackson, Michael Vick, uh, Sean McCoy. Uh, right, yeah, but yeah, and one of them, on the team. yeah, one of them mistakenly gave ESPN a soundbite. I don't know, maybe it was Vick, and he said, "Oh yeah, we're a dream team." And then from there on out that season, they just had a big target on their back, and everyone hated them. Right. So my answer to this question is the Browns sort of remind me of that a little bit. I mean, I I do think they're up and coming. Uh, certainly. OBJ is a great acquisition. They've still got Jarvis Landry. They got Kareem Hunt uh, when he comes back from suspension. And uh, Baker Mayfield's an up-and-coming QB. I think they'll be – I mean, they were 7, 8-1 and one last year, I think. And they'll be pretty good. But I don't see them as better than 8-8, nine, 9-7. Eight and eight, nine and seven. I really think they're, they're going to be on the outside looking in for a playoff spot. Um, probably fighting for a playoff spot. But I, I don't think they're a Super Bowl contender, certainly. Uh, which is, and it's interesting – because if you look at the at, at the odds, at the sportsbook odds, the Browns are actually favored to win the AFC North, a division that has the Ravens and the Steelers. The Browns are the fa- uh, the plus one twenty five favorite right now to win the division, which I think is ludicrous. To be That's quite pretty honest, pretty amazing. <laughs> like I agree with you, Neil. Super Bowl contenders, no chance. Um, a good team, like like Josh. Last year, you asked me. Last year, you asked me like, "What's the what's going to happen with Cleveland? Are they going to be better?" And and there was a little bit of hype about Cleveland. And what did I tell you then? Let them win a game first, and then we can talk about if they're going to be good. And so they did that, and they went out and won seven games, and they look better. And certainly, they were much, much, much better when Baker Mayfield kind of, um, I want I don't want to say took over, but after the coaching change and the offense kind of was a little bit more loose, and and Mayfield was able to do his thing. But I mean, I'm I'm definitely I, I kind of agree with Neil. Like Super Bowl contender, no way. Good team, yeah. Do they? I don't. I'm not as like, um, I'm not as like doom and gloom about like their chance of winning the division. I think they do have a chance because I don't think the division's strong. Maybe that's part of the reason why Vegas has them with those odds. Don't forget, Vegas usually knows what they're talking about. Well, that's, they usually uh, do. I mean, that's true. So, but you know, neither neither of you have mentioned that. Uh, there, the Browns head coach Freddie Kitchens. If I'm not mistaken, he has not been a head coach at all before. I mean, he's been an assistant or a coordinator, but he's not. He's not been a head coach, not even for one game, as far as I know. Is that correct? 
Right. Yeah. yeah. He did have a great rapport, though, uh, when he was calling the offense for Cleveland last year with with uh, Baker Mayfield and the offense certainly took off um, when when Freddie Kitchens uh, took over the offense. So I'm not especially worried about the coaching, although it's it's a fair point. I, I think that may if, if they do make the playoffs, I think that holds them back from advancing all the way to the Super Bowl, perhaps um, an, an inexperienced coach. But I, I, again, I just really think. Let's see how these pieces fit together before anointing these guys the next great thing. You know, football is really the ultimate team game. And and to have a lot of individual stars, sure, that's great. But that doesn't necessarily mean you have a great team. All you have to do is look at the New England Patriots, especially last year. Who are the stars? Who are the stars? I mean, you have a 40-year-old quarterback. I mean, do you consider him a star at this point? Maybe. And, and you know, a bunch of real pieces that all fit together, right? So... Yeah, yeah, for sure. Stephon Gilmore, I think, was uh, he got all pro votes or he might have been first team all pro. Apart from that, uh, like you say, Brady wasn't a top no. five quarterback. Certainly, maybe he was a top 10 quarterback last year. Yeah. Uh, he was fine. Um, and, you, you you know, always a great leader. And you had Stephon Gilmore. But who else was there that was really a star? Gronkowski, yeah. maybe. But yeah. he didn't even play that well. I think the Browns also put a little bit of target on their back. Mayfield's really brash. He already came out and said something this week about like, oh, yeah, the hype is real. And... We'll see. Well, I mean, I, I like I like Baker Mayfield. He was my favorite quarterback from that draft. I want him to do well. I want him to prove everybody wrong. And I, I hope they do really well. And I hope they're an exciting team to watch because God knows those Cleveland Brown fans really deserve it. Right. So give it two, three years, I think, yeah. uh, for them to really gel and become a, a real cohesive unit. I think mm-hmm. I just want to make one more comparison between the Cleveland Browns and the uh, and the Rams. So obviously last year, everyone was talking about Sean McVay and how he's like this uh, young genius. And and yes, they did make it to the Super Bowl, but uh, Bill Belichick made him look pretty stupid in the Super Bowl. So And he has more experience than Freddie Kitchens does. So um, that's another reason why I think people should just calm down a little bit about Cleveland. But we'll move on to, uh, we'll move on to another team now, another team that everyone seems to be talking about. And this team has even... They had an even worse record last year. It's the it's the Arizona Cardinals, who I guess some people are calling the air raid Arizona Cardinals because of their new quarterback, Kyler Murray, and their new head coach, Cliff Kingsbury. And so there's a lot of people who are expecting a lot of things from this team. We'll start with Skip this time. What are your thoughts on the Arizona Cardinals? I think they're going to suck. And I don't think Kyler Murray is going to do well. And like, I just don't think I just told I think the whole situation is going to be a big joke. It's going to be a big disaster. Like everyone's comparing Kyler Murray to like uh, Patrick Mahomes. They're like, oh, yeah, Kyler Murray is going to be the next big thing. They drafted him even comparing him to Mahomes physically, like his physical size, his throwing arm, the way he can scramble the whole deal. Right. And I just think that like everyone forgets Mahomes sat on the bench for a whole year. Before they made him the starter. And Kansas City is a really good team filled with tons of offensive weapons. And Kyler Murray is coming into a lousy team with not a lot of weapons. And he's going to be totally unprepared. And I just think the whole thing is just going to blow up. I wouldn't be surprised if Kingsbury's fired at the end of the season. I mean, uh, those are all interesting points. Uh, for one, I'll say Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury, as as a college head coach, was his record was 35 wins, 40 losses. So he was a below... 500 coach in college, right? So now he's coming to a pretty tough division right. uh, in the NFC West, and, uh, and and people are expecting him to to win some games. Now he did have an innovative office as uh, offense, I should say, as Cub said, the the air raid offense. Uh, and what's interesting, look, I, I sort of double as a, a fantasy football expert, and if you're drafting your fantasy teams, what Kyler, what um, Cliff Kingsbury has been saying is that he's going to try and run 85 to 90 plays on offense for the Arizona Cardinals, which is unheard of. I don't think they'll be able to get there. But even if they run 70 to 75 plays a game, you're going to have great fantasy football production. I I do feel like Arizona is going to get into a ton of shootouts, and they're going to lose a lot of games 50 to 32. So Mm -hmm. if if you're drafting in fantasy, you want to draft guys like Christian Kirk or even Larry Fitzgerald, David Johnson, even Kyler Murray. I think he'll have a pretty good fantasy football season but i do agree with you skip i don't think for real regular football i don't think this team is equipped to win a lot of games i, I think this is a 5, 11 6 and 10 team at best yeah and kyler murray is qb2 at best i mean he's not a starting qb in a fantasy football team just to go to fantasy football 
Yeah, maybe he, he, uh, again, I don't want to delve too much in fantasy. I do think he'll get some rushing yards. And if, yeah. they, if they do run 70 plays a game, he's going to throw for 300, 350 yards a game yeah. just on the basis of volume. But that doesn't mean that that's a winning team or a winning formula. That just means that you're, you're essentially installing a college offense and a college football team in the pros, which I don't think will necessarily work. Remember Chip Kelly? That didn't do so well. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's sort of Chip Kelly like and you also remember again using Eagles comparison skip that Chip Kelly did run a lot of plays and so the Eagles again their offensive numbers look good under Chip Kelly but they they weren't a winning team and they needed him to be gone in order to win the Super Bowl and be Super Bowl contenders. Yeah. Chip Kelly when he first started with that no huddle and super fast offense and like basically no huddle the whole game. At first, it was like a lot of people took notice. They were like, wow, this is really innovative. But then after a while, it's kind of people adjust to it. And then its own fault started to show. And and that was the end of that. And he also made some terrible personnel decisions, which is separate from the X's and O's of, of his coaching. Um, we'll right. see what happens in Arizona. I just, I just think it's a big circus, really. So we're going to shift gears. Instead of talking about specific teams now, we're going to talk about some specific players because mm. there have been three players um, who have made a lot of headlines this offseason or the last month, let's say. Those three players being uh, Antonio Brown, Ezekiel Elliott, and Melvin Gordon. Um, of course, Ezekiel Elliott and Melvin Gordon still have yet to sign with their respective teams. Antonio Brown does have a contract, but has yet to play a down in the preseason. He doesn't have um, a helmet. He doesn't have a helmet either. <laughs> his feet look awful. Mm. Um, so I guess, Neil, we'll start with you. Uh, will these three players be on their respective teams in week one? Will they be in uniform? Will they be starting? Will they be playing? Um, and you can take them one at a time or, or, or in any way you want. Right. So, yeah, I'll take them one at a time. Uh, starting with Antonio Brown, I think the easy answer is really, I don't know. But even if he plays, I think this acquisition was a disaster for the Raiders, to be quite honest. Because, look, he may play, uh, he might even produce, right? This guy could catch 90 balls for 1,300 yards and eight touchdowns. And I th still think this was a disaster because they're going to lose the entire clubhouse there. Uh, I mean, An Antonio Brown is the ultimate diva. It, uh, we've almost never seen a situation like this where there's a rule that's been implemented with respect to these these helmets. Every other player in the NFL is abiding by this rule. And this guy is, you know, taking his ball and leaving, as it were. So I, I, I just I think this guy's got a screw loose at this point. And um, I just don't think he's good for the team or good for the NFL. Not sure if he played. My, my gut instinct tells me he's going to play. Uh, he may even play well, but I just don't think. Uh, that's going to be all that helpful for the Raiders. With respect to the other two, I think Zeke might ultimately sign. Uh, the Cowboys do, and Jerry Jones do have a history of signing their star players. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott certainly is a star player. Uh, they, they rely on him. He's a big part of their offense. Now, having said that, Dallas did draft a running back by the name of Tony Pollard, who's looked really good in the preseason. But Ezekiel Elliott is... In my mind, top five running back, and Jerry Jones doesn't mind paying top five running backs and stars. So I, I think he might sign prior to week one. Or if not, we rem we remember, maybe certain of our listeners don't, but uh, Emmett Smith, I think in like 1992 or something, had a, a little bit of a holdout for a couple games, came back in game three against the Giants and ran for, I think, 250 yards and three touchdowns. And then the Cowboys won, I think, their second of three Super Bowls. Uh, this is jog testing my memory a little bit, but I, I think that's right. In any event, uh, we could see a similar situation, not Dallas winning the Super Bowl, but Ezekiel coming back in something like week three and, and being very strong. And then with respect to Melvin Gordon, um, I don't think he, he deserves to be paid as much as he thinks he deserves to be paid. And I think the Chargers have a really good backup in Austin Eckler. And so I have a feeling Melvin Gordon might be the Le'Veon Bella this year, and he might be sitting out for a while because I don't think the Chargers are going to come up to a monetary value where Gordon is satisfied. I kind of agree with agree with everything Neil basically just said. And like Josh, if you're gonna ask me, are these guys gonna sign? No one knows. Like honestly, no one knows. Um I'll look at it from another angle. Like, do the Cowboys need to sign Elliot? A hundred percent they do. Um they're 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 not a winning team without him. Do the Chargers need to sign Gordon? No. They can they can be I think they'll be fine without him, <laughs> you know? And Antonio Brown, 
it's funny that you I I it's funny that you you mentioned something there, Neil. That I had a note already written down, but and I wrote diva or mentally ill. And right. Yeah, like there's something just really wrong there. Like it's it's like there there's some personality disorder. I, like I, I don't want to diagnose him, but there's something wrong with this guy, right? It's like. And then, like you said, maybe he's just going to show up week one and he thinks he's going to torch everybody. And, you know, good for him. I hope he does. But, like, the Raiders, are, I don't think, are going to be a good team anyways. And I think he's he's basically, like, I think I think Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell, who, who we didn't mention in this, in I'm bringing him up kind of as a tangent. I think these guys are going to become, like, obscure. They're gonna like play themselves into like obscurity. I don't think that I think they're gonna eventually in a year or two, both these players are gonna be irrelevant in terms of production, fantasy football, <clears throat> what's on people's minds, and when you talk about NFL stars, you know. Well, yeah, if people I can are mention, gonna stop. Yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Cup. No, if I just want to mention something about the Cowboys. So uh you're saying how they really need uh, Ezekiel Elliott to contend. Yeah. You know, they had him all season last year, and the Cowboys weren't even that good. And what shocks me is that Jason Garrett still has a job, to be honest. Well, well they did make the playoffs, right? Yeah, uh, they, yeah. uh, as, as I recall, right? They were a 10-6 team last year. They were. And I'll get into the Cowboys, I think, a little bit later when we, we, we go through our uh, division-by-division predictions. But, um, I mean, you're right in saying the Cowboys certainly were not as good as their record last year. And if there's one team that's probably going to regress to the mean in all of the NFL, it's likely the Cowboys. Uh, so I, I do see that. But you're right. I think Jason Garrett did save his job by winning 10 games. And he's certainly going to be on the hot seat this year if the Cowboys do struggle. I don't think he's on the hot seat. I think that Jason Garrett is the the coach of the Cowboys because he's like, he does what Jerry Jones wants. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Jerry Jones likes him. He, he, he's like, and, and that's where it starts and ends. So I think he's the quarterback there until, unless they, unless they finish last in the division, I think he's still the, I think he's still the coach of the Cowboys. Our next topic is a topic that I don't like to talk about. Mm. It's the new England Patriots. Ugh. And we know, we know that I don't like the new England Patriots. And every year, every year, I hope that they're going to finally suck, but they never do. So I guess my question is, will they finally suck this year? No, they're not going to suck. Yeah, they I mean they certainly they certainly won't suck. Even if they even if they're 10 and 6, Josh. Right? Or 9 and 7. Let's say they're terrible and they're 9 and 7. Are they that's still going to win the division. <laughs> right? Yeah, you're right. So No, that's 100% correct. And that's that's what I was going to say as well, Skip, is that look, until this division gets better, uh, the, the, the Patriots are essentially uh, – you, you can lock them in as AFC's champs, right? The Dolphins are terrible. I think they're the worst team in the NFL. The Jets maybe are getting better, but still they're not winning more than six, seven games, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I mean there's, there's, there's really nothing there. The Buffalo Bills, they're not winning this year either, no. right, with Josh Allen. And quarterback. No. Again, maybe they're getting better, but they're, they're not better than a seven-win team. So, so that's – see, the thing is that's the six wins right contend. there, right? That's six wins for the Patriots right there. Or five, right? Well, so, no, six. Yeah, well, no, I mean I, six. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing like uh, the Jets a bone. Maybe somehow they, they lose a game. You know, like maybe the Patriots lose one of those Patriots games. Patriots always losing Miami. Yeah, for some reason. But like that, yeah, they, the, they can't win in Miami. Yeah. So like when you, when you're automatically kind of running your division, like, uh, I don't know. Like Josh, that I haven't been said. You guys know I'm a, I'm a Pats guy. Yeah. And so. I do think, look, they they lost Gronk this year, obviously. Tom Brady is a year older. But the defense, and it's only preseason uh, and, and preseason practice and whatnot, but the defense is looking really good. Uh, they got this guy, Chase Winovich, uh, in, the, in the third round of the draft, who is just looking like a complete dynamo. And they've got this uh, another guy, Byron Cowart, in the fifth round of the draft, who's, who's been an interior disruptor. And uh, I, I really think the defense is going to pick it up. Their secondary is among the best uh, in the NFL. And the offense... It's interesting, right? Josh Gordon presumably is coming back. They drafted a guy named Nikhil Harry in the first round, a wide receiver, the first time they've ever drafted a wide receiver in the first round in the Belichick era. You know, they still got Edelman. They've got maybe the best stable of running backs in the league with uh, Sony Michelle and James White. And then they drafted Damian Harris in the second or third round, I can't remember, uh, and Rex Burkhead. They might go in some two, three running back formations. Um, I, th- I think this is going to be, forget the fact that they by default win the AFC East. I think they are a Super Bowl contender once again. Um, 
it's still going to be a, a couple years before we could talk about the Patriots' demise. Yeah, Josh, I was just going to say, the road to the Super Bowl, it's still going through the Patriots, <laughs> whether you so, like it so, or you don't, you know? And a lot of that has to do with Belichick. I mean, all, Belichick, like, in the Super Bowl, what what they did to the Rams, like, that was a coaching clinic, you know? I know it was the worst Super Bowl game, and it was crazy boring, and nothing happened, but, like, that was a coaching clinic, you know? Honestly. So, Neil, let me ask you this question. What are the chances, like, in week two or three, Bill Belichick picks up the phone, calls Rob Gronkowski, and asks him to come out of retirement? What are the chances of that happening? Oh, boy. Or, or, or what are the chances that Gronkowski calls Belichick and says, I want to come back? What are the chances of that? Well, you're assuming Gronk, you're assuming Gronk is like lucid and not hung over. So <laughs> the call is going to come from Belichick, no? In all honesty, I don't think it's happening in week two or three. But I would imagine Gronk is keeping himself in shape. He most likely does not want to go through a training camp, does not yeah. want to go through the preseason, and doesn't really want to play the regular season. So I think there is a pretty good chance that week eight or nine uh gronkowski comes back they put him on maybe the non-football injury list or something like that or or keep him practicing and not not even activate him for games for the first four weeks then in week 13 or 14 he comes back and he's gronk and we you know the patriots have him for the playoffs that wouldn't surprise me at all and in fact i would say i think that's actually going to happen oh my god really wow awesome it's a brilliant move actually it is it is if if gronk wants to do it if he wants to do it because because of all teams, the Patriots know they don't have to worry about the regular season. And if this guy's problem is staying healthy for, for 16 games, yeah. well, then don't let him play 16 games. Let him play the last four yeah. and then the playoffs. Because he proved last year in the playoffs. Like, he didn't have a great year. He wasn't, a, he wasn't like a great, great tight end anymore. He was just good. But you saw, like, in the big game and especially in the Super Bowl, when they needed, like, a big play and a big catch, you know? That's who Brady went to, and that's who made the catch, right? So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. And by the way, his in-line blocking last year, I think, was the best of his career. To the point that Pro Football Focus, I read an article, said that Rob Gronkowski could have been a middle-of-the-pack offensive lineman last year wow. by, just by his blocking. So forget about his receiving skills, which are tremendous, but this guy is a great, you know, don't forget, he's like six foot seven and weighs 270 pounds. If he put on 20 pounds of, of muscle or, or, or fat or whatever, he could actually play offensive line in the NFL. So this guy's a great blocker too. Wow. Okay, I'm going to put both of you on the spot now. Skip, this is for you first. Mm-hmm. Um, in 2017, there were two teams that finished in last place in their division the Houston Texans and the Chicago bears. And both of them won their division in 2018. So skip which team that finished in last place in their division last year is going to win their division this year. Do I have to pick one? (laughs) You can pick more than one. I don't know, but do I have to pick one? I don't think it was going to be any. Well, it's happened. I think 16 out of the last 17 years. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be one. Let me tell you the, let me tell you the last place teams in the divisions, Arizona. You already know how I feel about them. Tampa, complete garbage. Detroit, one of the worst teams in the league. The Giants, a complete mess. The Raiders, a worse mess. The Jaguars is the only interesting one. Cincinnati is maybe the worst team in the league. And then we already talked about the Jets. So I can't see any of those teams making the jump um, from last to first. Like, if we want to rephrase the question and talk about what what, what teams could make the playoffs that didn't make the playoffs last year, you know, then it, it maybe I have, I have a few teams for you like the Browns, right? Um, the 49ers, I think are the closest to that question in that they were four and 12 last year. And I think they're going to be a playoff team this year, but that's pretty much all I have to say. Okay. And you Neil. Uh, all right. So I, yeah, so, so I will give you one team that, uh, was last place that I think is going to win the division. And, uh, uh, Skip, you, you mentioned them as the only viable choice, yeah. and that's the Jacksonville Jaguars, who, as we remember two years ago, yeah. uh, made it to the AFC Championship game and, and really could have won that game, right, if, if not for some pretty terrible quarterbacking. And the Jaguars and, and coaching. got a better bad quarterback co- this year. Coaching. Right, and coaching. Yeah. But they, they've got a better quarterback this year in Nick Foles. Now, I'm going to throw my, my first advanced – Oh, maybe maybe I've I've used a couple of analytics uh, terms earlier, but 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out DVOA for the first time. Nice. And Jacksonville was Love still it. 11th in defensive value over average last year. 
uh, it was really their offense that was a disaster. I think they and and even they probably underperformed being 11th in defensive DVOA. I think they're a top five defense in the NFL. They've got Nick Foles. Maybe Leonard Fournette can stay healthy this year. And uh, they're in a pretty weak division. The Colts. Uh, Andrew Luck is already um, showing himself to be injured. There's the, the Texans are okay, but I think the Jaguars can actually win that division or at least make a run for the playoffs. The other team, if we're going to go for non-playoff teams that are going to make the playoffs, uh, I like Minnesota, the Minnesota Vikings this year, who were tenth in overall DVOA last year, which is really um, showing themselves to be uh, the skill level of a playoff team. And unfortunately for them, they didn't make the playoffs. They got Anthony Barr back this year. They got great skill players uh, in in Thielen and in uh, Stephon Diggs. Mm-hmm. And I, I I'm a Kirk Cousins guy. I know some some people aren't. And yeah. I I think the Vikings make a little bit of a jump uh, to maybe a ten and six team and uh, and and win a, a pretty tight NFC North division. Okay, so let's reverse the question now and, and Neil to you first. Which playoff teams from last year will not? make the playoffs this year? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question, too. I think we, we've sort of touched upon uh, two of them and the reasons uh, the, the reasons I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. And uh, I would say Dallas and the Chargers. Uh, with, with respect to Dallas, they may not have Zeke. I said I think he'll come back, but it's possible they don't have him. If they don't have Ezekiel Elliott, they're dead in the water. Uh, with respect to DVOA, they were 21st overall last year. They won a bunch of close games. They were 21st in DVOA, showing themselves to be the skill level of a six or seven win team, ended up winning 10. And as we've seen, those trends of winning close games is just not sustainable year to year unless you're a team like the Patriots who wins that type of game. So uh, I think Dallas, instead of having a tremendous record in close games, will have more like a 500 record in close games and is going to end up missing the playoffs, maybe be a six or seven win team. And then the Chargers are just really in such a tough division they might not have Melvin Gordon, who I said, uh, Austin Eckler is still a pretty good backup, but it makes a little bit of a difference. Their offensive line was ranked 29th in pro football focuses metric of measuring offensive lines last year. And I think that could spell trouble for Phil Rivers. They haven't gotten much better. And lastly, they lost their star safety, Derwin James. I think he might be out for the season, but at the very least, he's out for the majority of the season. Uh, they lost him during training camp. So I think the Chargers are a pretty good team, but um, they're they're going to be in a little bit of trouble this year. Well, Skip, that was a lot of information. This is why we have Neil on the show. <laughs> um, I kind of agree with a lot of what Neil said, although I still think the, tr- the Chargers are a playoff team. Maybe it's just because I like Phil Rivers. I don't know. I think one team that was in the playoffs last year, I, I totally agree with the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys are in big trouble. Um, like I, I, I mean, Neil backed it up with the numbers, but anecdotally, I kind of already knew, wow, they won so many close games last year and I don't know how they did it. You know, uh, Seattle, I think is a team that's going to be in trouble this year. Um, their offensive line stinks. <laughs> I say that every year, but it doesn't seem to bother uh, Russell Wilson. He, he seems fine with running around or maybe he does even better when his offensive line sucks. Um, and they're not a, and they don't have the identity. I mean, they have the identity of this defensive team, but they're not an elite defense. So I think Seattle's is in for um, a tough, tough season. And I think the Steelers they're also in a tough division, by the way. Yeah, well, I already yeah. mentioned. I think the 49ers are ready to take a jump there and challenge for a playoff spot, right? And I think the Steelers are in a bit of trouble in that in their division. That division's totally up for grabs. The Steeler, I mean, they lost Antonio Brown, and you can say what you want about his attitude, and I just called him mentally ill, and he's a diva, but um, he he still caught, like, <laughs> how many balls last year? 100, 90, 1,200, 1,300? Like, he still puts up numbers, right? And I don't know how easily those numbers are replaced. Roethlisberger's are a year older. Everybody's a year older. I just think the Steelers are not going to be a great team. They're going to be okay and that might not be enough to make the playoffs and one more thing if Andrew Luck is injured uh, the Colts are screwed but you could say that about every team I guess with their starting quarterback okay so we're gonna now talk about uh, we're gonna now hear your guys predictions for division winners and wildcard teams we're Mm -hmm. gonna go division by division and uh, Skip you'll say one and then Neil you'll say one so we'll start in the AFC East Uh, Skip go ahead Patriots. Neil. I'll say the Patriots 
Bucks as well. I don't think we need to waste time on this one. Uh, AFC North. Um, Cleveland. So I like the Ravens uh, in the AFC North, although I don't love their quarterback. I think uh, I think their defense will show through. Mm-hmm. AFC South. Houston Texans. So I, I p- actually picked the Jaguars for the AFC South. I think they're going to have a nice year. Hmm. Uh, worth noting, by the way, if anyone gambles, the Colts are the favorite still to win the division, despite some uh, some injury concerns. AFC West. Kansas City. Yeah, Chiefs. Yeah. I'm surprised you guys were so quick to say Kansas City because they were they were tied with uh, the, the Chargers last year. I know, but Chargers are not going to be as good, and Kansas City is just their their offense is too good. Even without whoever pieces, it's it's. I feel like their their offense is so well designed that they can throw in a bunch of guys and and that are going to fill roles. They'll they'll find new guys. You know, Kareem Hunt's not there. Doesn't matter. They're gonna they're gonna figure it out. You know. Right. Okay. And he wasn't there for the playoffs, as we recall. And, yeah. I mean, I know they did lose to the Patriots in the FC Championship game, but their offense was still fantastic in that game. Yeah. Uh, without Hunt. So. Yeah. Okay, I'm really interested to hear what Skip's going to say about this. The NFC East. Oh, you don't want to do the AFC Wild Cards. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, who are your wild cards? Um, it's it's really hard, actually. It's really tough. Um, I think the Chargers and Jacksonville. And Neil? Yes, so I, I'm, I'm going to say Pittsburgh and, and the Houston Texans. Yeah. So we, we, we have mostly the same teams, pretty much. Yeah, very, yeah. very similar. Okay, so we'll go to the NFC now. So skip NFC East. Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, we didn't talk much about the Eagles like on in the analysis, but they're the best team in the NFL. And and I'm not, and I, and you can say that I'm an Eagles fan or whatever, but they're the best team in the NFL. They're gonna they're gonna run away with the NFC. Really? Yeah. So it doesn't concern you that uh, they don't have a backup quarterback. Well, look, they it, it was great that they had a backup quarterback all this time, but you know, like I just said before, like there's not there's no teams that really have a backup quarterback. <laughs> you know, any team whose starting quarterback gets injured, they're pretty much screwed. So we just have to cross our fingers and hope that Wentz can stay healthy. But their team is loaded, top to bottom. The the depth they have depth at every position, and they're 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 going to be really good. Okay, so you're not you're not worried about uh, the Duke quarterback on the New York Giants? I'm not. No, okay. <laughs> because the owner of the team came out and said he hopes that he doesn't play. Okay. <laughs> so by the way, he's looked great in the preseason, Daniel yeah. Jones. Um, but, but but can we talk about preseason? I mean, play, but the Giants aren't a good team. Yeah, preseason is not like even what preseason was last year or five years ago, because there are no starters playing in the preseason. <laughs> you know, so you're watching B teams play against B teams. So I'm I'm glad that Daniel, uh, what's his name, Brown? No, Daniel Jones. Daniel, yep. I'm I'm glad that he was able to you know do well. But I mean, you're playing against backups. You know, Neil. Before I, I, agree. Get... I actually think. That Jones is probably better than you're giving him credit for. And no, I think he's fine. I have no problem. Yeah. I think he's a perfectly good quarterback. It's weird to how high they drafted him. He's a guy from Duke, Great. so me and Josh are going to like him. But, I mean, the Giants are not good. I mean, Sorry, I didn't didn't mean to interrupt you there. Before you no, give me your pick for the NFC East, I need to go off on a little tangent here because you guys mentioned preseason football games. I, I, I don't know if you guys are aware, there was a preseason NFL game played in Winnipeg on yeah. Wednesday night, I believe. Yikes. Between yeah. uh, Oakland and Green Bay. Of course, not you couldn't name any player that actually played in the game because none of them are going to make the team, I don't think. But the reason I'm mentioning the game is because they had to shrink the field down, which is normally 100 yards. They had to shrink it down to 80 yards. I don't know if you guys heard this. Yeah. Because um, the for posts. a CFL game... Yeah the goalposts are placed in a different position. And of course they are able to move the goalposts, but then there was a hole in the ground where the goalposts used to be. And the, they were, they, they were concerned about player safety. So they shrunk the field down to 80 yards instead of a hundred and played the game. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I just thought it was funny and I want to mention it, but now Neil, you can make your pick for the NFC East. Well, I'm going to keep going on your tangent for, for a half a second. Um, because one thing that you mentioned was that no, NFL or recognizable NFL players played in that game uh, out in Winnipeg. But in fact, uh, Aaron Rodgers was supposed to be playing for the Packers, but because of the field conditions and because of that divot in the end zone, uh, they chose to hold him out as well as Devontae Adams and a bunch of the rest of at least the Green Bay stars. I'm not sure if the Raiders starters were even scheduled to play in that game, but certainly the fans in Winnipeg, because of the field conditions, uh, were deprived of seeing some pretty high level 
uh, NFL players. In any event, my pick for the NFC East uh, is the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't think they're the best team in the NFL, but uh, they are a pretty strong team. And uh, I do think they'll win at the very least the NFC East fairly easily and could make a pretty good playoff run. They still have uh, the skeleton of the team that won the Super Bowl only two years ago. Right. All right. So we go to the NFC North. Skip. It's still the Chicago Bears. I like the Vikings in the North. I think they're the most talented team uh, mm-hmm. in that division. Although the Bears are a nice team and may have the best defense in the NFL. And potentially if Mitch Trubisky uh, plays a little bit better than he did last year, they could be a dangerous team. Could I make, make another weird prediction, though? If the Vikings struggle, Mike Zimmer is the first coach to get fired this year. Yeah, I can see that. And, and speaking of coaches, we haven't talked about uh, Guy Lafleur's brother, Matt Lafleur, on Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> it's look, like Keila Fleur's brother look they yeah. can change coaches they can do what they want whatever Aaron Rodgers is still really good but the Packers are not good and I could just see already Aaron Rodgers at a certain point this year he's going to be playing on one leg like he always does and I just they were 6-9-1 and one last year and I think their ceiling is probably 8-8 eight and eight, you know I mean I think their ceiling is higher but I agree that they probably will go 8-8 eight and eight. <laughs> yeah there you go yeah all right, so now the NFC South. Oh, well, I mean, it's still the Saints. Maybe my not maybe they're not gonna run away with the division. They were you know, they were thirteen and three last year and Atlanta was seven and nine, so was Carolina. I, I still think the Saints are the best team in the division, but I think the Falcons are not a team to look look out for. Yeah, I completely agree with what Skip just said there. I think the Saints are going to win the NFC South, but I think the Falcons are going to be much improved in that division. Yeah. And finally, last but not least, the NFC West. Oh, it's tough because I, I'm taking the 49ers. Okay. Wow. I don't think the Rams are going to have a good year. I mean, I still think they're a good team, but I don't think they're going to have a good year. No, I, just, I, want, I wonder what the odds are of the 49ers actually winning that division. So I'll open up my Bet365 app quickly as I'm speaking. <laughs> uh, I do... <laughs> I do think that the Rams are going to win the division. I think they're still the class of the division. Uh, I think the 49ers are much improved. All right, two wild cards? Yes, two wild cards from the NFC. I'll take Atlanta and the Rams. Okay, so I'm, I'm very similar again. So I'm going to take Atlanta as well and the Chicago Bears. So I think we have a lot of the same playoff the same teams, teams as well yeah. uh, in the NFC. I a couple mean... of differences. I don't think you have the Vikings in there, but... yeah. You know what? If we did this show after week five, you know, like we look back and see, oh, wow, look, this team's four and one and we didn't realize. And... Right. Like, <laughs> it's like, right. Because it's, it's, it, well, I mean, like, it's, I hate to use this term. It's a little bit too hip for me, but there's like this recency bias, right? Because the last thing we remember is the Rams were great and the Patriots were in the Super Bowl and, you know, like the Chiefs were unstoppable on offense. And, but like, that's the last thing in our heads, you know? NFL is also a 16-game season, so there's a lot of variability in terms of your middle-tier teams, right? Yeah. A bounce here, an interception there, a fumble here, and a, you know a, a 62-yard field goal there, and it makes a difference between a 10 and 6 team mm-hmm. and a and a 7 and 9 team, right? So one team makes the playoffs and one doesn't. Like we're talking about Dallas last year, they just could have they could have as, as easily been a, a 7 and 9 team. So you know, it depends on how the ball bounces. It's very hard to a lot of times when you look at a team that had a really good record. And and you see, and it's like they they the, the turnover differential, like like the takeaways minus right. the giveaways. And it's like oh, all of a sudden, like whatever team they 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 had so many takeaways, they had so many sacks and fumble recoveries, right? And and you can't predict those, right? Like you can't predict those interceptions and fumble recoveries and stuff like that. And and some teams, you know, one year they win a bunch of games because they won the turnover battle, and the next year their turnover differential kind of comes back to the pack, and all of a sudden their whole record comes back to the pack. So Neil, I'd like you to tell me, please, which two teams are going to play in the Super Bowl, and which one of them is going to win that game? Yeah, I was I was kind of going back and forth, and I, I was I was going to pick someone in the AFC other than my my Patriots because uh, I feel like you know I'm always a homer in picking the Patriots, but uh, I'm I'm still picking them uh, over the Chiefs get in a rematch of the AFC Championship game, and then uh, in the NFC, I think the Saints are going to beat the Vikings uh, in the NFC Championship game, and then I've got the Saints. Uh, redeeming themselves for last year's blown pass interference call and uh, beating the Patriots in the Super Bowl. The Saints are a dangerous team. I'll tell you why. 
because they got screwed, <laughs> right? <laughs> they got screwed of the trip to the Super Bowl, and and that's gonna stay with them. It's like go back to the NBA. Remember, like remember that year where Ray Allen hit that three pointer from the corner, and and um. The Heat beat the Spurs, right? Like, the Spurs had that game won. They had the championship won. And then Ray Allen hit a miracle shot. And all of a sudden, the Heat are the champions. Well, what do you think? The Spurs didn't forget about that all year. And they went on and they won. And they went back to the championship. And they killed the Heat in the finals that year. So Hey, I look, th- I always come on for the March Madness preview, right? <laughs> look what happened this year with Virginia. Same kind of idea. Yeah, I mean, it, it stays with you. So, I mean, I really feel like... the. The Saints are on a mission, but like in the NFC, I'll still take my heart over my head and I'll take the Eagles. And like I said before, Josh, look, the, the Patriots, uh, look look at their record last year, okay? They were 5-1 and one in the division and they were 8-0 and oh at home. <laughs> so they're going to get that home field advantage again. You know, like, it, like, well, they, I mean, they didn't have it last year. The game was an arrowhead, but like it they're still going to be in a prime position come the playoffs. And it, it's, you still going to have to beat the Patriots to get to the Super Bowl, And I think they're just going to make it again. They're going to get there again. And so and they're going to add Gronkowski at the trade deadline. Maybe I'm um, but, but I'll take the Eagles over the Patriots again. And like a rematch from two years ago. All right. Well, that was a great game. So <laughs> love to see a rematch of that game. Yeah. Yes. That Super Bowl was much better than last year's. Before we sign off, remember, you can listen and subscribe to new and archived episodes of the Skip and Josh podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and of course, Spotify. If you listen to the show through Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review. We would love to hear from you via email, skipandjoshshow at gmail.com, via Twitter at Skip and Josh, or by liking and following our Facebook page. As always, you can get all the links to everything I just talked about on our website, skipandjosh.com. We leave you with this. I'm done with all my questions. Unless you guys have any uh, parting shots or closing remarks, uh, I think that might conclude our NFL preview for this season. I mean, my parting shot is, uh, I hope Antonio Brown finds his helmet. And uh, Neil, can you tell everybody um, how they can find you on social media? Sure. So you can find me uh, on Twitter at Assembly Neil. I still do some some fantasy football and some fantasy golf writing on the website fantasyassembly.com. Although again, I've, I've cut down on my on my articles uh, this year, but uh, you, you still do find me there every once in a while. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, boys, we should watch a game together at some point this year. I'll definitely a- uh, I'll definitely give you a shout, Neil. We'll get together and watch. I mean, Josh is in Toronto; it's tougher for him, but yeah, we'll definitely do that. Just take a Skip and Josh uh, podcast road trip to Buffalo and catch a game live. Let's do it. <laughs> I've actually seen a game in Cleveland live. Never been to Buffalo, though. I mean, I've been to the Great city, job. but not to a game. All right, let's do it. All right, well, Neil, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on our show. We really appreciate it. And, uh, of course, always excellent uh, knowledge brought forth by you. So that's why we love having you. And uh, we'll definitely have you on again certainly you know before the playoffs start or maybe before the super bowl and um of course as you mentioned as you alluded to march madness we're going to have a march madness episode as well so so you'll be on again for sure always a pleasure gentlemen thanks for having me thanks neil josh only one thing to say to end the episode you know whatever team you cheer for i hope you have a good season i hope the nfl season's fun for you i hope your fantasy teams do well let's just have a fun time with the nfl okay yeah. Everyone takes the NFL so seriously. The offseason is all about controversies and, you know, contracts and everything. But once the game starts, let's just have fun with it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. All right. Talk to you next time. <laughs>